Hi everyone and welcome to the Scrap and Create YouTube channel. It's Christine here and I'm here today with part two of my three-part tutorial on how I created my 7x7 Stamperia Wonderland mini album. So if you followed along with part one, you will have your book done, your binding done, and your four pocket pages. Remember, this in this album, the pocket pages measure seven by seven, which means that the covers of our album are seven and a half by seven and a half. So I like to work with my, um, in creating my pages, I like to work with my pages out of my book. So I have not adhered them to my book yet. If you have, then obviously you'll work with your book. But since I haven't, I'm just going to put my book aside and I'm just going to go ahead and start showing you how I did made these customized pages for this album. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, for this particular uh, step in the mini album making process, the main materials you're just going to need are of course your uh, cardstock, whatever cardstock color you choose. I'm just using a 65 pound Recollections cardstock uh, in white for this particular album, but whatever you're comfortable with, go ahead and use. You're going to want 3 8 inch score tape, um, which uh, you can get at scrapandcreate.com. And this is my go to size. This is the size I use almost exclusively. For a couple of my smaller pockets, I will be using the quarter inch as well. You can also get that from scrapandcreate.com. And then uh, finally, just to seal up a couple of the bottoms of some of the pockets, we're going to be using art glitter glue. We're mostly going to be using this glue in the part three video where we decorate the album. I use my art glitter glue to adhere all of my designer paper to my albums. Of course, you don't have to use the art glitter glue. You can use regular adhesive if you prefer. I just really like the art glitter glue for uh, numerous reasons. It really does also stiffen in the paper a little bit and to me it just gives the album a more um what's the word I'm looking for kind of just a more sturdy feel to it but that's just my preference you can do use whatever adhesive you like and we'll talk more about that when we get to video three so remember now you have four pocket pages what makes them a pocket page is they have these two openings on either side right and so when you uh attach them to the book one side will go onto the hinge the other side is open for a side pull out or photo mat or what have you okay let's see if i can do something about this lighting here i feel there's a little bit of shadow on the right let's see if that helps at all okay i think that that's going to help a little bit okay so you have four pocket pages um, and you'll have a page on each side for a total of eight pages with your pocket pages plus you have the inside front cover and the inside back cover which gives you for this album a total of 10 pages so let's go ahead and set three of the pocket pages aside and we'll start here with page one in the description box of this video below and make sure you click the show more button so you can see all the information typed there but in that description box will be all of the measurements that you need for um, this part of the album construction. So I have your cut list for all of the um, special flaps, pockets, etc. for the album. I will also have a link in the description box of this video below to the walkthrough so you can see the finished product of this album as well as to part one where we made the book and the pages if you need a refresher on that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I will call out the measurements as we go, but again, they are all in that description box if you just want to go ahead and print them. You don't have to take notes or anything while we're while we're going along. You'll also, by the way, want a bone folder for burnishing your score tape and your folds. All right, so as I'm working on page one here, I always just want to remind folks, remember that when you're working on your pages, if you don't have them adhered into your album, you want to make sure that you're aware constantly of the orientation of your page. So for example, if I want to apply a flap to this right side here, I might turn the page this way so I can see better and line it up perfectly. But I want to make sure and turn it back when I'm done so that I always remember to keep the page this way so that the openings are on either side if that makes sense because you don't want to accidentally you know put something the wrong way <laughs> and then you know your book you know your book can't your page can't attach to the binding this way because there's no hole see what I'm saying so always just kind of keep the orientation of your page in mind 
and make sure that your openings are on the left and right. Now, of course, I'll be turning it to get better vantage points to be able to stick down my flaps and things, but I always just keep that general orientation in mind and roll, return it to this orientation when I'm done. You'll see me doing that a lot. And I just, so that's just kind of a little pointer I wanted to throw out there. Um, also, make sure that you don't accidentally seal the openings to your side pockets. Ask me how I know these things. <laughs> I have been making mini albums for years. Again, I'm just a hobbyist, but I've been making them for years and have made all of those mistakes in the past. So I try to throw out those tips when I remember to when I'm teaching. All right, so let's begin with page number one. We were going to have a right flap that's going to go onto the very tippy top here of the page. This right flap measures seven and five eighths by seven inches. On the seven and five eighths of an inch side, you're going to score at half an inch and five eighths of an inch. You are then going to put the score tape just on the half inch part. Okay, I've already pre-taped and scored everything, so this should hopefully go rather quickly. I think it can maybe get a little boring if you guys just watch me score and tape all day long. So I just try to kind of explain and show once I've already done the taping and scoring. So you see how I have this done and I have the tape on the half inch. Now if you just push this forward, and I'm going to bring this up to the camera, you can see there you have this little eighth of an inch gusset. Do you see that there? It's just a little bit of a gusset because only this part's going to be attaching to your page. So you will have a little bit of extra space in this eighth inch gusset here. It's just so that the things that we put underneath this won't get squished and we'll just have a little more room to play around underneath this flap. If that, hopefully that all makes sense. If anything, by the way, doesn't make sense or you need more help, please leave a comment in, in any of my video tutorials down below and I will help you as best I can. I can even pop on and do a short video if I haven't explained something well, just to kind of re-explain it. So anyway, to go over this one one more time, you want to cut a piece of cardstock to 7 and 5 eighths by 7, and then on that 7 and 5 eighths inch size, you want to score at half an inch and 5 eighths of an inch score on those two score lines. They're very close together, so you just kind of have to maneuver the paper to score on both of those score lines. And then you just place your tape on the half inch section only, leaving this eighth of an inch gusset on the page. I also created a little notch here, and for that I just simply used my envelope punch board from uh, We Are Memory Keepers. And all you do to do that is you just go ahead and slide this in, and this measures seven inches, so at three and a half inches would be midway, and then you just push this button down, and that's how you get this little notch. That's obviously an optional step. You do not have to do that. If you like the look of a little notch there, but you don't have the Memory Keepers uh, envelope punch board, you could use just a little circle punch, a one inch or three quarters of an inch circle punch, just to give a little notch there if you like. All right, so I'm going to, this is the correct orientation. I'm going to turn my page this way just so I can simply line this up and get this taped down to the right side of my pocket page. When I'm doing this, I want to make sure that I have just the half of an inch on the bottom. So I'm pushing that eighth inch gusset so it's underneath. So you can't see it from this vantage point right now. It's underneath. It's under, it's under the, under the, it's facing the table if that makes sense. I'm going to tear off just a little bit of the score tape backing and then I'm going to go ahead and line this up perfectly here with the right side of our pocket page. Once I have it lined up how I want it, I actually don't like that, this is why I only tear off a little bit of the backing at first because if I make a mistake and I don't place it down perfectly, I can just pick it right back up and wiggle it till I get it perfectly into place. So that looks much better. That's where I want it. So I'm going to remove the rest of the backing now and I'm going to give this a nice burnish. Now when I turn it back into the correct orientation, you'll see it looks like it doesn't fit, right? It goes a little bit over the base page. That's because you have to push it back on that eighth of an inch gusset fold. Once you do that and push that back, it's going to line up perfectly with your base page. See how I did that there? So now we have this little eighth inch gusset right there. So this is the opening to our pocket, right? 
And then here's our little eighth of an inch gusset. And here is this little flap that goes like this. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So next we have a left flap. So go ahead and open your right flap so it's in the open position. And now we're going to make a left flap that's also going to attach to our pocket page. The left flap measures four and a half by seven. And on that four and a half inch side, you're going to score it half an inch. I'm going to turn my page this way simply so I can get a good vantage point and get this perfectly lined up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just peel just a little bit of that backing off there. And then I'm going to get it lined up perfectly on this left side of my pocket page and then pull the rest of the backing off when I have it where I want it and then give it a nice burnish with my bone folder. All right, that looks good. Okay. All righty. So that is our left flap and our right flap and they just close on each other like so. I will show you in the next video, by the way, uh, where I will be placing some magnets. I use these basic gray magnets. You can get these at Scrap and Create. They're the best in the business in my experience. They're perfect. And I will show you how to adhere these in the next part. So right now we're just going to worry about getting the page construction down. And then I will show you that um, in the next video before we decorate. Okay. All right. So go ahead and open this back up now. So we have this flap and this flap. Now we have our base page here. For our base page, I have a little flap here that, I was, that I'm gonna center right in the middle of the little base page unit. And this is just for one of the cut aparts in the collection. What I do when I'm designing an album is I take the, pa the, the pages that have cut aparts and I take them, I set them aside and cut them out. And I use those in my album design quite often. Um, and I'm just going to turn this upside down so I can get a good vantage point on this flap here. So I like to incorporate them into my flaps. I just think it really adds a nice design element to the book. So that's why I have often many of these little flaps in my projects. I just think it's kind of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down now. By the way, this little flap measures four and a half by six inches. On the four and a half inch side, you're going to score at half an inch. All right, on this base page, I also wanted a pocket. So this is what we have so far, right? I wanted a pocket on the base page as well. So this measures eight by three and a half, and then you're gonna score on three sides at half an inch. You're then gonna miter your corners, which means you just, where the score lines intersect, you just cut on an imaginary line there. That's just gonna help when you fold everything for you to have nice square ends to that pocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my little um, tool that I use to cut my, to tear my score tape. I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of the score tape off of the, the short sides because this will help when we get to the decorating section. So in the next video, you'll see what I mean. But when I have this adhered down, I want to be able to slide my design paper underneath the envelope so it looks like a cohesive unit. So that's why I only take a little bit of the short ends of the backing of the score tape off at this juncture. Then I put my design paper down and then remove the rest of it in the next video. And I'll show you that in video number part three. So all I'm doing now is I'm lining up. I do take all of the backing off of the bottom strip, the long end, but I only take a little bit off at first so I can get it right where I want it, wiggle it if I need to, to get it right where I want it, and then go ahead and remove the rest of that backing. And then we'll burnish this. So this top of the pocket is left open intentionally. So again, we can slide that design paper right down and then we'll just be able to easily pull those side um, strips of the backing off when we're ready to decorate. So as you can see, this flap does not interfere with the pocket, which is how I wanted it. So I will be putting a little magnet here, which I'll show you in the next video. And then we'll probably have a little magnet of closure of some kind for um, the whole entire page. But anyway, this is page one. So we have when it's closed up, it looks like this. So we have this beautiful flap here, beautiful flap here, flap here for photos, this little flap here, and then a nice pocket. 
So that is page one. So you can go ahead if you want and write page one on this if you if you need that reminder to keep things straight. I'm just gonna do P1 on the front here. Now I'm going to turn this over. Remember we get two pages with each pocket page unit. So page two is gonna be the back of page one, obviously. And so let's go ahead and get started with page two. For page two, let me bring my little pieces over here. Okay. For page two, we have first a left flap that's going to go right up against the left side of the pocket page. Remember, that keep that orientation in mind that we talked about. This left flap measures five and seven eighths by seven. On the five and seven eighths inch side, I have scored at half an inch and five eighths of an inch, just like we did on flap number one, the right flap on page number one. Again, it just gives us that eighth of an inch gusset so that we have a little bit more room to put things underneath this flap without having this flap be wonky or crush things underneath it or anything like that. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn the book, the page this way, and I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this out because remember we just want the tape on that half inch flap. I'm gonna take a little bit of the backing of the score tape off just so I can get this in the correct spot. And now I'm lining this up with my pocket page, the left side of my pocket page. Once I have it where I want it, I can remove the rest of the backing of the score tape, give it a nice burnish, and then remember to push it back on that other score line. Remember, and then now we have that nice eighth of an inch gusset. We have it on both sides, but we haven't sealed our pocket. See, our pocket still exists for our hinge and our, uh, and then on the other side, of course, our side uh, photo mat. Okay, so here then is our left flap. We are going to go ahead and put a pocket on the front of this left flap. So this is gonna go right here. This pocket measures six and a quarter by three and a half, and then you score on three sides at half an inch. Again, you miter your, the two corners where those score lines intersect. I'm going to grab my little tool that I use to tear my score tape backing, just like with the first pocket, we're just gonna take a tiny little bit of the backing of the score tape off of the short ends, and then all of it's gonna come off the large end in a moment, but I'm gonna do my little trick where I just take a little bit off so I can help it get it right in place where I want it. Alrighty, so you want it right up against the right edge of your flap here. So make sure it's all the way against the right edge, lined up flush against the right edge of this flap. Once you've got it in place, you can pull off the remainder of the backing of that score tape and then go ahead and burnish. So now we have this cute flap here with a little pocket on the front. Okay, we now have our left flap in place. We're gonna do a right flap now that's gonna go on the right side of this pocket page. And this right flap is going to measure five and three quarters by seven and on the five and three quarter inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch. I'm going to turn the page this way. Just peel a little bit of the backing of that score tape off. Remember, if you ever have any tape kind of hanging off, maybe you didn't tear it quite right at the edge there, just make sure you fold that in so it's not hanging off of your page and then getting stuck on something in the future. I always try to make sure all my tape is tucked under where it needs to be. If my head gets in the frame, I do apologize. You just want to make sure that you have this nice and lined up along the right edge and also that it's nice and lined up here. So when this closes, everything is lined up and it is. That looks perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and take the score tape backing off and give it a nice burnish. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We have this cute little flap here that has that little gusset so we can put stuff underneath. We have this flap here. And now we have a base page flap. And it's a large one. This collection has a page that has four six by six cutouts. And they're really, really, really pretty. So I wanted to kind of find a way to emphasize them, but also have lots of room for photos on the back and on the actual pages themselves as well. So what I did is I created a couple, and you'll see as we go throughout, there's a few of these, large flaps. These measure 
six and three quarters by six and a quarter. And on the six and three quarter inch side, you score it half an inch. I'm going to turn my book upside down, or my page rather, upside down, and I'm just gonna center this large flap right in the front top here of this uh, base page unit. I'm on the base page right now. And I'm just eyeballing that. If you wanna get out a ruler and measure, you absolutely can. But eyeballing, I found is sufficient uh, most of the time. Okay, so this completes page number two. So we have, this is a very simple album, by the way. I just wanna point out, as some of my albums go, this one's really, really pretty simple. Has a few less flaps and twisty and turny things than I usually have. Um, and that's because I only decided to use two packs of the paper instead of three. Uh, so I couldn't, you know, I needed to conserve my paper as best I could. Um, and so there's not quite as many flaps, but I still think it's a really pretty album. At least it is in my head. I haven't made it yet. We're making it together, but hopefully you guys will like it as well. So as you can see, this is going to be a beautiful spread to really showcase that designer paper and put tons of photos here. So this is how this is going to close and we'll do magnets and I'll show you that in the next video. So this is what page two will look like all nice and closed up. Okay, so we're done with this first base page unit. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and set this to the side. Let's bring over now another base page unit. Double check on that orientation. Make sure you have your openings on either side, the left and right. And let's go ahead and move on to page three. Let me grab my materials for page three here. Okay, page three, we have a right flap, which is going to measure four and seven eighths by seven. On the four and seven eighths sides, you're going to measure at half an inch and five and seven eighths of an inch. I'm sorry, let me say this again. Four and seven eighths by seven inches. On the four and seven eighths inch sides, you're gonna score at half an inch and five eighths of an inch. Just like we've been doing on the top flaps of all of our other pages. Just so if I'm doing more than one flap, I sometimes like to have that little bit of an eighth of an inch gusset there to give me a little more room for what's gonna come underneath. So let's go ahead, like we've been doing, this is gonna go on the right of our pocket page. So I've turned the pocket page on its side here and I'm lining this up with the right hand side of the pocket page. Make sure that's where I want it, so that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the backing off and then we'll give this a nice burnish with our bone folder. And then remember, when you're using the gusset method and giving yourself this eighth of an inch gusset, you then wanna push the page back. Once you've got it nice and secure, you wanna push it back so it stands up. So now you have that little eighth inch gusset there that's standing up, okay. Next, we have a little front pocket we're gonna put on this right flap. And this is going to measure, um, and I did not do, this one is, is, is a, a kind of a different pocket. As you saw with the other pockets, they were the ones where you fold under to give you lots of room to stuff lots of photos. The, the, because this is a flap, I'm just gonna make this one a tighter pocket. So this is just, we're gonna put quarter of an inch tape on the bottom and a little bead of glue on the ver on the sides. We're gonna put the score tape on the sides and a little bead of glue on the bottom and just stick it down there. So it's not gonna be as wide of a pocket, but she'll still be able to fit some tags and things in this pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my quarter inch score tape and I'm just gonna put that right up against either of the short ends of the this little pocket and this little pocket by the way measures four and a quarter by two and a half so it's two and a half inches high this um paper collection comes with some beautiful tags that are very thin uh but they're absolutely beautiful and um i can show you a couple right here that you can cut out and so I thought this pocket would be great, just a kind of a tight pocket up against the page or up in this case, the, the flap, but um, you know, kind of perfect for those little tuck spots for a, um, a, you know, a couple of those tags. Okay, so I'm just gonna take off just the tiniest little bit of the score tape on the sides because we're gonna have to scooch our um, design paper underneath this when we're doing our decorating. I'm gonna take my art glitter glue now 
and then just run a small bead of glue along the bottom. Okay, now we're just gonna go ahead and line this up flush with the far left side of this little flap here. Once you have it down where you want it, you can go ahead and give it a burnish there. And then when we come back and decorate in part three, I'll show you how you remove the rest of that score tape um, in terms of when you're decorating your, your flap and, and things. Okay, so let's see here. I kind of wonkied up my score line. Let me just, there we go. So score there, score there, and then push that little gusset. Okay, there we go. That's how I want it. All right. Now we also have a little flap that I have designed to put on the top of this right flap. And it, so it's gonna go right here. And see, it's not gonna interfere with the pocket, so there's gonna be plenty of space. And we our tags could act as our closure instead of having to use a magnet as well. So this little flap measures four and a half by four, and on the four and a half inch side, you score it half an inch. And I'm gonna flip this upside down so I can get a good vantage point. And I'm just gonna center this on this little flap here. And this was designed to, of course, put, fit four by four photos. And there's some beautiful four by four cut aparts in this collection as well. So my idea is on the front, display a little four by four cut apart just for fun. And then on the inside here, of course, place a photo. Okay, so this is our right flap with a little pocket and a, fla and a flap on top of the flap. Okay, so now the flap opens and we have now our base page, right? So on our base page, we have flap number one. We have two flaps in a pocket is what we're ultimately gonna have on our base page. Flap number one is going to measure six and a half by four and a quarter, and on the six and a half inch side, you're gonna score it half an inch. And it's gonna go up here about a quarter of an inch in from the right of the left side of this pocket page. I'm going to flip mine upside down so I can get it nice and straight along the top of this pocket page. So again, I'm about a quarter of an inch in from the side of the pocket page. Maybe not a quarter, maybe more like an eighth of an inch. I might take that over just a little bit more. Okay, now it's a little closer to a quarter of an inch over. So you're just making sure you have it flush across the top there of your pocket page. Now I'm gonna put it back in the correct orientation. Again, our pockets are on the sides here, as you can see. Let me just show you like so, okay? All right. So now opening this back up again, we're still working on the base page. We have a second flap. And this is gonna go on the, on the side, right up here at the very tippy top of the base page. Don't let it interfere though with the score line on your right flap. You wanna come slightly in from that score line. This flap, by the way, measures four and a half by four. On the four and a half inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch. I'm going to turn my uh, page this way take off a little bit of the backing of the score tape and then stick this down. If my head gets in, I apologize. And you just wanna come just a little bit out from the score line of your little uh, right flap there. And then also make sure you're pretty close to the top, maybe a 16th of an inch of the way down from the top of your pocket page. All right, there we go. That is clear of the score line. You can always fold it over just to make sure before you tear off the rest of that um, score tape backing and then go ahead and give it a burnish. All right, so we have a little flap here, a flap here, and then we're gonna have a pocket on our base page as well. The pocket measures um, eight by three and a half, and then you're gonna score on three sides at half an inch, and then of course, miter your corners, as we've talked about, and we're gonna do the same thing again that we've been doing. Just take a little bit of the backing of the score tape off on the short sides, and then in a moment, all of it's gonna come off the bottom, but I always just take a little bit off first to get it positioned where I want it. So, you wanna make sure you line this up with the bottom of your base page, and make sure it's all the way over to the left of the page so it doesn't interfere uh, with that um, right flap score line there. Okay, so you might have to kind of get over it for a minute. If my head gets in, I apologize. You just want to make sure that you're placing it down correctly. 
Okay, let's see here. Didn't quite like that placement. Let me just try one more time here. Sometimes it doesn't go down the first time the right way. And that is why I do like to just take a little tiny bit of that score tape off. Just a little bit. Okay, now I'm taking the rest of the backing off since I now have this pocket where I want it. All right, so here is our little flap which does not interfere with our pocket. So I'll flap on the right here. And then we have our large flap up top. So this goes like this, and then this will close like so. This pocket is a little wonky because it had a little bubble in it. So let me just pull that a little bit better. What that means is sometimes the score tape will stick before you have fully burnished or evened out whatever you're trying to stick down. And if that happens, all you have to do is kind of lift it up a little bit. The score tape can be kind of forgiving sometimes. And um, now that I've done that though, this flap I didn't put high enough. So I'm actually gonna take this off. I know you guys are probably like, oh my gosh. But you know what? I make so many mistakes. I'm human and I make them that I've gotten pretty good at <laughs> at uh, redoing things and taking things off and removing things that have been taped down without causing huge damage. So I'm going to redo my score tape on this flap. Remember how I said to do it as, about a, a sixteenth of an inch on the top? Well, strike that. We're going to do it all the way up to the top of this pocket page so it will not interfere with our pocket. Let's see here. Will that work? Yes, that will work. All right. So now I'm going to try this again. I'm just going to turn this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take off the, the backing, just a little bit of that backing. And then I'm going to put this all the way to the tippy top. Again, you still want to avoid the score line on the right and avoid that little flap there. Okay. So now just make sure that you are clear of your pocket and that this will fold down correctly. All right a little too high on the right here. Boy, this, sometimes, you know, you try to plan these YouTube videos and then you have problems where you least expect you would have problems. <laughs> uh, it's just the way of the world, I suppose. All right, so now let's see, I am clear of the score line for the right flap. I am clear, it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and burnish this down. Okay, yes, that's exactly right. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of that score tape off now. Okay. All right, so here is what page three is gonna look like. Let's go ahead and take our pencil and write page three on here. Okay, so now we have this right flap with a little flap here in a pocket. It opens up, space for photos, nice little flap here, nice little flap here, and then a pocket. Alrighty, so that is page number three. All right, let's flip this base page unit over now. Again, double check your orientation. Make sure that you have your um, pockets open and on the left and right side. And we're gonna now go on to page number four. Page number four, we have a right and left flap that are going to be the same exact size. These right and left flaps measure and they're gonna meet in the middle. So it's gonna be like a little um, gatefold or door opening or something like that. But I have added that eighth inch gusset for these so we can have some fun pockets and stuff underneath. So these both measure, you'll want to cut two of these, four and an eighth by seven. And on the four and an eighth inch size, you want to score at half an inch and five eighths of an inch. So again, you're doing that on both of them. So you're going to adhere one to the left side and one to the right side. I'm going to flip my page. I'm going to do the left side first. You want to make sure and get these nice and lined up with the edges of your pocket page. Also, with make sure you know that it's even all the way along the bottom and top as well. You want them to meet in kind of an even way, if that makes sense. Once you've got the left one burnished down, push back, of course, on that gusset. So you have that little eighth inch gusset there. And now we're going to do the same thing on the right side. Remember, these are both exactly the same size, and it's going to be exactly the same method to get them adhered to the page. I'm going to take just a little bit of the backing of the score tape off, and then just adhere it to this right side of the page. Now, before I go removing all that score tape, I want to make sure that it meets up nicely in the middle. Now, I haven't pushed back on the score line yet, 
for that eighth inch gusset. So it's gonna overlap right now in this position and that's okay. I just wanna make sure that they're even. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the backing of the score tape, give it a nice burnish. And now once I push back on and uh, get that eighth of an inch gusset going, you can see they actually meet perfectly. And it's a little hard to see on camera, I know, but they do, you trust me, they meet perfectly in the middle. So it's kind of cool. The closure for this is going to be this square. Go ahead and cut out a square in the same color cardstock as your pages. Cut it four by four. And then I'll show you, I'm not going to put it on right now because we have to decorate this piece before we get it down and do magnets and stuff like that. So we will just set this piece aside. If you wanna write yourself a little note on a sticky note, you can. This is just, you can just put page four closure and then just set this aside. And I will show you how that's gonna work as a closure, a magnetized closure for these two pages uh, in the next video. So in part three, we'll do that. So just go ahead and set that aside. Now we're gonna go ahead and um, open these two side pages up here. And now we have our pocket page. I'm sorry, our base page, which is right here in the middle, of course. For our base page, what we want to do, looks like I missed, yeah, I've got a, some score tape didn't come off here. Let me just get the rest of that backing off there. There we go. Okay. On our base page here, we are going to have a pocket and a flap. The flap is going to go up top and it's just going to be kind of centered in the middle of the base page. And this measures four and three eighths by six, and on the four and three eighths, three eighths inch side, you score it half an inch. I'm gonna flip my page upside down so I can get a good vantage point here, and then I'm just gonna center this along the top here. All right, and I'm just eyeballing it again. If you want to get out your ruler and get it, you know, absolutely perfectly centered, you can totally do that. I'm just. A lot of the time I'm an eyeballer. When it comes to constructing the book itself and putting that binding in, I do get out my ruler, but for the decorating and stuff and page construction, I often just eyeball it. It's, uh, it kind of doesn't matter once you have that beautiful paper in. If there's a slight little, you know, if it's a sixteenth of an inch to the right, no one's going to notice. So our pocket now, again, we're going to do the same thing. Just take a little tiny bit of the score tape backing off of the sides. The pocket measures eight by three and a half. You're going to score half an inch on either side and miter your corners. And then we're going to adhere this to the bottom of our base page here. I want to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the score lines for either the left or right flap. So just be very careful when you're laying it down that it doesn't interfere with those score lines. If my head is in the frame, I apologize. Um, but you really want to get over this and make sure that you have it correctly in place. All right, so that looks good. And so now I'm going to go ahead and pull off the backing of the, oops, the remainder of the score tape. Okay. See how I have that little bubble again? I don't know why my pockets are giving me such fits today, but let me see if I can just go in and give that a little fix. See, score tape can be pretty forgiving if you get it, if you pick it up right away before it has a chance to really get burnished into that paper. So if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world, I promise. I make tons of them and still end up being able to complete, yes, complete my projects. Always make sure, you know, before you move on that it, you are able to close things properly. So this flap doesn't interfere with our pocket, which is what we want. And then these two close perfectly. And remember, we'll have this closure, which will be all nice and beautiful and decorated when we're all done. Now, in a lot of my albums, I do a lot more flips than this, as I've already mentioned in this video. So, so often I would have like this go out and out and out, but I just had limited paper and I wanted to do a simpler album. I have a specific recipient in mind for this one. They don't have a whole lot of photos, so they don't need a huge album with a million flips and flaps. So we're just gonna keep this one a little bit more on the simpler side, but I really think, at least in my head, it's lovely. We're making it together now, so I haven't completed it, but um, I hope that it turns out beautiful and you guys love it. So let's go ahead and write P4 on this one. And we are done with our second base page unit, so we can go ahead and set that aside. We can grab our third base page unit again 
again, just make sure you have your openings of your pockets in the correct orientation on the left and right. And then let's go ahead and begin page five. Here is page five. It's very similar to page one. Not exactly the same, I don't believe, but it's very similar. So for page five, we have this flap again. And I've done that little notch. And as I showed you, I did it the same way that I showed you in uh, for page number one. This is slightly smaller. I didn't go all the way to the edge on this one. So it's the measurement's a little tiny bit different. So it was just a design choice. It really doesn't matter. You can repeat the same measurement as you did for page one or use the measurement I'm going to give you now. This measures, and this is your right flap, this measures seven and a half by seven. On the seven and a half inch side, you wanna score it half an inch and five eighths of an inch to give you that little eighth inch gusset we've been talking about. And then we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna flip my page this way, and this is gonna go all the way to the right of my base page. So I'm gonna go ahead and take just a little bit of the backing of the score tape off so I can get this perfectly in place. Remember when you're positioning this, you wanna fold it out so that gusset is actually flat. Then you'll push it back and expose the gusset once you have this taped down. So right now, that gusset is flat up against the um, actual page here. It's not exposed, in other words, it's not lifted up. It's flat, which is why this is right now, this front, this flap is longer than my base page, right? But that's okay because as soon as we get this score tape off and get this nice and burnished, we are going to go ahead and push back on that score line where that eighth of an inch is. And now it's going to fit lovely right on top here. Okay. I guess I did do it the same measurement actually as the first page. So ignore what I just said. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a long day. Do what I say or do what I do, not what I say. I don't know. Um, now we're going to have a left flap. And this left flap is going to measure four and three quarters by seven. And on the four and three quarters inch side, you're going to score it half an inch. And this is going to go on the base page. I'm going to flip it this way. And this is going to go right flush against the left side of that base page. Okay. So it looks like I left a little tape again. Sometimes when you do that method where you just take a little tiny bit of the tape backing off at first, sometimes it will tear. It usually doesn't happen to me, but I've had it happen twice in this one video. Of course, once you get on camera, everything bad happens, you know, because you're trying to teach people and then you make all these mistakes. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> but if that happens, it's very easy to just, as you saw there, I just was able to take my fingernail and get it out. You could also use a pick tool or a paper piercer or whatever you have. If you have some tape that's being especially... Um, burdensome, you can use that to get it um, to come off. So all I'm doing right now is checking that everything is lined up nicely. It is, so I'm going to go ahead and peel the backing off of this left flap and then burnish it down with my bone folder. Now on this left flap, we're going to have two pockets, one on the front and then one on the back. We're going to do the same method that we did for the, the small tight pocket earlier. So these aren't the ones that have the little foldy mechanisms on the back. They're tighter, so you can't fit as much in them, but there's so many beautiful tags and cut-aparts in this collection that I thought that would fit perfectly in tighter pockets like this. So that's why I designed the album this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the outside pocket first. So I'm just going to take my, let me just move this out of the way for a sec. I'm going to take my quarter inch tape. Again, you can get your score tape at Scrap and Create. I, I almost exclusively use three eighths of an inch, but as you can see, there are times when the quarter inch is helpful. Go ahead and tear that off as well. So we can go ahead and burnish this tape. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other piece. By the way, it'd probably be helpful if I gave you the measurements of these. Both of these measure the same thing. They are four and three sixteenths by three. So the flap itself is, um, uh, is uh, four and a quarter. And so I made these four and three sixteenths, just a sixteenth of an inch smaller. So they will fit perfectly and the, that flap will close with ease. So that's why I did it that way. It's kind of a weird measurement, I know, but some I have found in some of my albums when I've made these small pockets the same size as the flap, sometimes I get a little bit of resistance when closing the flap. Not all the time, usually it works out just fine, but I figured, you know what, let's just avoid the problem altogether and I'll just start making my pockets um, for this design, you know, a little tiny bit smaller. 
and it works. All right, so now we can go ahead and bring the, the page back over. We're going to just tear just the teeniest little bit of the backing of the score tape on either side off. And then I'm going to just use glue again along the bottom, like I did on that other tight fitting pocket. The reason, and I don't think I explained earlier why I'm using glue. The reason is because when you don't, when you, when your pocket doesn't have um, the uh, the flippy thingies, you know the technical term, but the uh, flaps that flip under and adhere with score tape. When it's just this tight fitting pocket with no flips underneath it, um, it, sometimes that score tape can catch on your inserts when you put them in. They can catch along the bottom, and so to alleviate that, just put a little tiny bead of glue and you're golden instead of score tape. The score tape on the sides never is a problem for me. It's just along the bottom I found that sometimes it will stick like a tag or something might stick. So this alleviates that problem. But if you just want to use score tape, you can totally do that. It's, it's whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to do the same thing now to the inside of the left flap. So we're just going to go ahead and take the tiniest little bit of the backing of the score tape off of the short sides. And then I'll take my glue and just do a little bead of glue right along the bottom there. And then when you're setting these down and adhering these, just make sure you are going towards the edge of the flap and staying clear of the score line. So this way your flap will close perfectly. All right, let's go ahead and put the pin back in the glue so it doesn't clog. Now we have our base page to deal with, and that's very simple. For our base page, I just have another one of those large flaps to accommodate the six by six cutout that the cutout that these this collection has. So this flap measures six and three quarters by six and a quarter, and on the six and three quarters inch side, you're going to score at half an inch. I'm going to flip my page upside down, and I'm just going to eyeball this and center this right in the middle of the top of the base page just like so. Just make sure it's flush with the top. And if you don't want to center it, you can put it a little to the left or a little to the right. It really doesn't matter. It's your book, so however you want to place it is perfectly fine. So this is what page five looks like. We have this flap here. We have this flap with these cute little pockets on each side for some gorgeous tags. You are going to love the decorating part, I think. Part three of this video tutorial series is going to be so much fun because we're going to use all this beautiful paper. And then we have this large flap here. So we have this large spread, as you can see here, for photos as well. And as you guys know, if you've watched any of my um, album walkthroughs and or tutorials here on the Scrap and Create channel, you know I love to utilize my albums and I kind of like to do the best of both worlds. I like to have places just for um, enjoyment of the paper, the beautiful paper that we spend so much money on and we hoard and collect, right? I want to, I have this a little crooked, so I'm just fixing this while I'm chit-chatting with you guys. Um, and then I also want room for my photos. So when I design my albums, I have spaces that I designate just for the beautiful paper. And then I have spaces that I designate for photos. So I try to have that, you know, nice and planned out as I'm going through and, you know, creating the bare bones of my album and then I get to do the decorating part and really make it come alive and it's so much fun. Okay, I just, that was bothering me. It was just a tiny little mistake that I had made so I fixed that. You won't have to worry about that. I just put my flap on a little tiny bit crooked. Okay, so this is page five. We can go ahead and write that down if you want to. Let's turn this base page unit over now and on the back of page five will be page six. We are going to have a right flap on page six. Okay, this right flap measures four and three quarters by, I'm sorry, four and three quarters by six on the four and three quarters inch side. You will score at half an inch and five eighths of an inch. So again, giving us that, no, I'm sorry, on this one I just scored at half an inch. I'm sorry, ignore that. I just scored at half an inch because this is a very simple page. I just, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I forget my own designs. All right. So this is going to go on the right. And then we have a smaller flap, which measures four and a half by four on the four and a half inch side score at half an inch. This one's going to go on the left. So this one's going to kind of overlap this one like so, and then we'll have a pocket. So let's go ahead and put our flaps down first and then we'll go from there. 
So I just kind of want to, I want to place my pocket for just a sec so I can make sure, yeah, we are going to want to, yeah, we're going to want to put our flaps down first so then we can stick our pocket on top. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the right flap first. I'm going to turn my page. And I am just going to kind of put this about a quarter of an inch from the top, but flush up against the right side of my pocket page. So no exact measurement placement, wherever you want to put it will work just fine. Okay, so that's down. And then we have a small flap to go here. And so I'm going to turn my page this way now. so I can get just a good vantage point. I'm going to take just a little bit of the backing of the score tape off. And then we'll stick this one down. Oh, maybe just a little bit further down than the right flap, maybe like a three quarters of an inch or so from the top, but flush against the left side. Okay. There we go. Okay, that's done. And now we wanna go ahead and place our pocket down and our pocket measures. Oh my gosh, I got a piece of my hair stuck. It's a little insane. Okay. There we go. Got it. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and set our pocket down. And so these will kind of co come over our pocket, which is fine. We'll use magnets and, and such to get those exactly how we want them. But our pocket's going to measure eight by three and a half, scored half an inch on three sides, and then miter your corners. And we're going to do the same thing we've been doing, of course. Just take a little bit of that score tape off the sides. And then... Um, adhere the complete bottom of the, the long the long end of the pocket to the pocket page. So this is a very simple page. It's just a pocket and two little flaps. Very, very simple. Just make sure when you're setting it down that um, you place it so that you're not overlapping either of the score lines for either of the flaps. It should fit perfectly if you cut it correctly. If you find that it doesn't, just trim a little tiny bit off the pocket. It's always good to dry fit first. Um, by dry fitting, I just simply mean going ahead and placing everything down like I did at the beginning before I started taking the tape backing off, just to make sure that everything is gonna fit and you know the order you want to lay stuff down. Um, so I think it's always a good idea to dry fit first. And that way, if you do see that something's maybe a little bit too long, you can fix it then. It's much easier to fix then than after you've taken the backing of the score tape off. Okay, so I'm just going to give these flaps a little bit of a burnish here in the pocket as well. And then we're going to go ahead and just write P6 on this one. So we're done with our third base page unit. We are on our last base page unit now, which is going to consist of pages 7 and 8. For page 7, we're going to have a little, this is a very simple page as well. This is just a little flap and a pocket. Very, very simple. The little flap is going to go on the right. It measures four and a half by four. On the four and a half inch side, you're going to score at half an inch. And it's just going to go on the right here. See, this is what I mean by dry fitting. I'm just sort of placing it down before I take any adhesive off. The base page pocket is eight by three and a half. Score at half an inch on each side. And then miter your corners. And this is going to go down here. So this is going to overlap our pocket just a little bit and that again is totally fine. We just want to make sure when that when you're doing it that way that your flap goes down first. So let me go ahead and take off just a little bit of the backing. And I'm going to come down oh about maybe half an inch um, from the top and then flush up against the right side of this pocket page and then I will remove the backing of the the rest of the backing of the tape. All right, now go ahead and put that flap in the open position. And then we're going to do our pocket like we have been doing. Whoops, don't want to take that much tape off. Just a little bit of tape off of the sides. Okay. Okay. And then we'll get this down on our pocket page. So again, page seven, super, super simple. Make sure, again, when you're placing it down that you don't overlap that score line for your flap. Okay, that looks good. So we'll go ahead then and 
remove the, there we go, remove the score tape. There we go. Okay, we give this a nice little burnish here. And we'll give this a nice little burnish as well. And we can use a magnet to just kind of keep this down on top of our pocket if we want to. Okay? But again, we'll get to that in video number three. So this is page seven. Again, super simple. It doesn't get much easier than that. Let me just, just want to check something really quick here. Just give me one second. Yes, okay. I just wanted to make sure I had this in the correct orientation, and I did. Okay. Finally, let's flip this over, and we are on our last page, which is page eight. All right, so for page eight, another super simple page here. We have our base page flap, which is, again, created to utilize some of those beautiful... Um, six by six cut aparts from the collection. This measures six and three quarters by six and a quarter on the six and three quarter inch side. You're gonna score it half an inch. And I'm just going to center this at the tippy top of the page, like we've been doing. This is such an easy page design. I promise, if you have never made an album before, you can make this album. This is a very easy album to put together, I think. And it's fun, and it really lets the paper do the talking. On the back of this, I have this little pocket here. So there's going to be a little pocket, another one of those tight pockets, on the inside of this 6x6 um, flap. So to make that, I'm going to grab that quarter inch tape again and do what we did for the other tight little pockets throughout this album. So we're just going to put a little bit of the quarter inch on the short ends and then we'll put a bead of glue on the long end. So let's go ahead and burnish that down. Then we'll take just a tiniest little bit of the backing of the score tape off so we can decorate easily. Get our design paper behind this pocket. Oops, I did not burnish that well enough, did I? Okay, let's try again. There we go, okay. And then we'll take our art glitter glue and we will just go ahead and run a little bead of glue along the bottom. And then that's gonna go right here at the bottom of the inside of this flap, just like so. Just mind the score line. You don't wanna go under, you know, beyond the score line of the flap. All right, so there we go. There's our little pocket. So it's open at the top on purpose for right now. Once we decorate, you'll see, we'll pull that score tape off and that pocket will be nice and secure. So that is page number eight. I think I wanna add like a little flap here or something. I will probably come back and add just a little something to the right side. I feel like this page is a little too simple, but I will come back and we'll talk about that if I do that in the next video, page three. But this is page eight. All right, it's very simple. So now we are done with our pocket pages. Go ahead and grab your book now, and it's time to do the inside front and back covers. The inside front cover, I'm just gonna do a little pocket. This pocket measures eight and a quarter by two and three quarters, score on three sides at half an inch, and then miter your corners. And then this is gonna go right at the bottom. It's a very shallow pocket, and there's a reason for that. I have a fun mechanism that's gonna go up top here, and I will talk to you all about that in the next video. And there will be a special video to show you how I made that. So there will actually be a fourth video in this series um, that will just be how to make that mechanism. It's from my card making days. I mentioned before on this channel, I'm not an expert in mini album making. It's just something I do as a hobby and have been doing for years and years now. I started as a card maker. I'm still a card maker, but um, let me just interrupt myself for a second. I am going to just even this up with the inside lining of this uh, inside front cover and I'm gonna go to the right. So it's a little bit of space here between the edge of the pocket and then of course that gusset there, or that little space between this, the front cover and the spine. And that of course is intentional. You wanna make sure you leave that space a little bit. So 
Anyway, the fun mechanism that goes here is something I learned long ago in my card making, but it's really cool. So we'll talk all about that in the next video. And then, like I said, there will be a special video just on how to do that. All right, so that is the inside front cover pocket. We are also going to do the same size pocket on the inside back cover. So again, it's eight and a quarter by two and three quarters. Score it half an inch on three sides and miter your corners. And we'll do the same thing we've been doing with the pockets in terms of taking off just a little bit of the tape on the short sides. And then we're gonna line this up with the bottom of our inside liner. And this time we're gonna line it up to the right so there's some space and we're clear of this gusset where our book closes and opens. So we're just going to go ahead and line this up to the right. Make sure it's also flush along the bottom. If my head gets in the frame, I apologize. It's just very helpful to kind of get right over top of your workspace sometimes and really make sure you have it nice and straight. And I kind of didn't there, did I? There we go. That's better. Okay. See how I was able to fix that? I promise. Don't be hard on yourself, guys. You can fix anything in paper crafting. All right. So there is that. Still not satisfied with that. So I am going to just pick it up just a little bit. See, I hadn't given it a hard burnish yet, so I'm able to do this. And then I'll be able to burnish it now. I'm happy with it really hard and it'll stay put for us. There we go. Okay. So there's our two pockets for our inside and back covers. I also have another mechanism that I have added to the back that I will add to the back cover. We will not be putting these in right now. This is a little waterfall and it's going to go this way. And there are one, two, three, four of these. So you will need to cut four of these. They measure, forgot to write it down, three and three quarters by four and a quarter on the three and three quarter inch side, score at half an inch. And these are going to go like so. And it's just gonna be just a little waterfall and they're just gonna come down like this. They will not interfere with the pocket. Alrighty. Um, but we don't wanna put these in right now because we have to put our design paper down first. So just go ahead and cut these, put your tape on the flap there, and then I'm just gonna paper clip mine together and I'm gonna grab a sticky note and just set this aside with that one other piece we set aside and I'm just gonna write inside back cover so I remember what these little pieces are for and I'm gonna set these aside. Okay, so with that, we are completely finished. We have all four of our page uh, base is done, which is actually eight pages, right? Page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so all of our base pages are complete. At this point, you can either it go ahead and adhere these into your book on top of your hinges if you like, or you can decorate them and then place them inside of your book. I like to work with mine outside of my book as long as I can before I put them in the book. So I'm going to still keep mine outside of the book for now. But go ahead and place yours inside the book if you're more comfortable with that at this time. So that is how all of these pages for this little mini album were made. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'm happy to answer. Make sure and come back and join me for part three where we get to decorate with this gorgeous Stamperio Wonderland paper. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys, bye-bye.